Now, having laid all that groundwork, a good component of the book is devoted to an area where some of the worst confusion exists, and that's how exercise relates to fat loss. Because our whole notions of fat loss are actually turning out to be very flawed. What we used to think of is a very simple calories in minus calories out equation is not that way at all. And any female that's ever crossed the threshold around 35 to 40 can attest to that. Because the exact same diet and um, exercise activity that kept them in good shape once they crossed that threshold suddenly seems not to work so well. And what we're coming to understand is that fat loss is very much a hormonal event, a hormonal metabolic um, episode. Not only is our current thinking about it flawed, we have to think about our exercise and dietary regimen in a way that creates the hormonal environment that's permissive for fat loss. The biggest fatal flaw in the way people think about fat loss is the notion that calories in minus calories out, that this calories out component can be significantly affected by exercise. By the notion that I get on this treadmill and I look at it and these calories tick off and after 40 minutes 300 calories are gone and there went that piece of key lime pie. It absolutely does not work that way. Think about it. If we were really that metabolically efficient, we would starve to death in the process of shopping at Bilo, much less in the process of hunting and gathering. What the treadmill's not showing you is when you plug in your weight, it's asking for your weight because it's calculating your basal metabolic rate, which tells you how much you would have burned just sitting there. And then it's adding the activity rate to that and giving you this total. But it's not telling you, burned 300 calories because of this activity, you may have burned 25 to 50. So it doesn't really amount to much. And once you understand the hormonal environment that makes fat gain and fat loss happen, you can see how it's not even the right question. Now, if I took each of you and we dumped you out in the woods of South Carolina and we said, hunt and gather and bring back to me over the course of a week everything that you've hunted and gathered. And we took accounting of everything you brought back to me, we would assign percentages to all the different macronutrient groups, protein, fat, carbohydrate, and we would add it all up. And what we would find is what you brought back to me, the smallest contribution would come from carbohydrate. Okay. And I hear y'all going, oh no, he's going to start on the Atkins thing. No, it's not what we're talking about. But you do have to keep this in mind. That is the smallest contribution that you would bring back to me from hunting and gathering in any environment. So we take that fact and we have to realize that the body is going to predicate the signal to store body fat on the macronutrient that is least abundant. Because if you have the least abundant thing in more than adequate supply, then it is safe to store body fat. So what we'll find is that body fat storage is predicated on the hormone insulin. What insulin does is it takes blood sh sugar that is circulating in your blood and moves it into the cells of your body. In particular, the largest storage reservoir for that glucose is your muscle cells. Okay. So, if there's an abundance of carbohydrate, that will get moved into your muscle cells until they're completely full. Once they're completely full, the muscle cells will decrease the sensitivity of the insulin receptors on their surface so that no more sugar can be brought into there because it mucks up the metabolic machinery. It's sort of like pouring pancake syrup on the keyboard of your computer. What happens then is the glucose starts to stack up in your bloodstream, which sends a more powerful signal for insulin to rise up. And insulin's major signal is nutrient storage, and you will start to store body fat. Well, when the time comes for you to mobilize body fat, your insulin levels have to drop. 
because the enzyme that moves body fat out of the fat cell is called hormone-sensitive lipase. And what hormone-sensitive lipase is sensitive to is insulin. If your insulin level is too high in your bloodstream, even at a calorie deficit, you will be physiologically unable to mobilize body fat. It will shut it off. So right now, the problem with obesity in our society is really a problem in how we handle sugar. And it's a problem of insulin sensitivity, which needs to be restored back to normal.